Hey, what's up? My name's Ryan. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Pandemic Fall of Rome. Now, if you're like me, you might be thinking, I don't really need Pandemic rethemed into a different era. Like, wh why is this important? Well, I kind of thought the same thing. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see what this game does differently. Now, instead of starting out through overview of the rules, I actually did an entire solo playthrough of this game. So if you look here in the corner, if you want to click on that, I go over the basics of how it works, especially if you've never played a Pandemic game before, or if you have and you haven't played this one in particular, I kind of talk about some of the differences. So rather than jumping into a big how to play in this video, I would just say click on that, watch the first little bit of it, and I'll kind of go through, here's how this works, here's how the basic system, how the board lays out. And since this is based on a fairly popular game, I will spend quite a bit of time comparing the two games. All right, with that being said, let's jump right into the review. We're gonna start out here with some positives as always. And the first positive I have by far is that it's not the same game. It has some of the same ideas for sure. But my favorite thing about the game is it actually did the work it took to reinvent some of the mechanisms. The best new mechanism by far, if you know how to play, if you watched my other video on how to do that, the best new thing the game does is there are five barbarian tribes and they're going throughout the Roman Empire and they have supply lines where like the orange barbarians, they travel in this direction, they go down here and then the blue one kind of comes around here and also goes here and there's a white one. Basically all these barbarians Barbarian tribes have a different supply route throughout your empire, which is so cool. So when you put a cube onto the city, if the city before in that supply line doesn't already have an enemy barbarian there, you have to back up and you continue backing up possibly all the way to their original supply, right? Where they are on the map. And all that's actually on the board as well. So it's so cool to look at this board. Almost everything you have, you don't have buckets of cubes off to the side. You put all the cubes onto the board, kind of in these strongholds of barbarians. You can't ever take them over but it's where the supply lines start. So I just love this when you play the game, you can actually have some strategic moves where you say, hey, I want to take out this cube here. If I kill this cube, we can't place Barbarian Cube in the city after that cube. It, it makes all these really interesting decisions where sometimes you can kind of, for example, you can kind of clear Spain and you can keep the area before Spain cleared off. So once you have that cleared, you know that they're not going to go through that area. Now kind of on the same line, all those all those supply lines, almost all of them lead you to the city of Rome. Since this is the fall of Rome, your primary goal is to stop Rome from getting an epidemic if you're used to the old terms or in the new term, you don't want Rome to get sacked. There were a barbarian sack Rome, which is historical, right? Rome is destroyed, you lose the game. So you're trying to protect Rome at all costs. You can also have enough other cities have epidemics or sackings and you can lose the game. But the main thing you don't want to have happen is you don't want the barbarians to make it to Rome and sack them. So as these supply lines fill out and you have epidemics, and you have outbreaks, and you have more barbarians pour onto the map, as they get closer, you have a lot of Rome cards. The city of Rome is in there five different times, one for each of the five, five barbarian tribes. Well, when you first draw Rome, you're like, oh, cool, what's so far away it can't hurt me. As the cards keep getting reshuffled, you also have some revolts in cities that happen. As that happens, the barbarians get closer and closer and those cubes start getting dropped onto Rome. That's gonna be my longest point of this whole review, but I think that's the most fun thing about the game is that when you look at the game, it actually made the, the continuity, it made the colors matter so much more than base pandemic or it wasn't like, here's the world, bad things are happening, kind of color, sort of can be worse than others, but it really has this flow through the map where again, you can make some great decisions where not just, oh yeah, we should take care of the city there's an epidemic, but we can take care of this. Let's also take care of the city before it. Now we're three turns away from this city being hit. It just adds so many great decisions. Now listen, the way has already come up a lot, but the other thing I love about the game is the new theme. I've actually never really was a fan of the old theme. It just seemed a little like, Oh, not concrete enough for me. You're like, oh yeah, I'm just a doctor and I just pop around. I just go into a city and wipe out the disease. It's a little weird, you know, right? I, I, I step into a city and I just clear all the diseases and that one, those disease cubes are gone. It's a, the base pandemic is a great game, a great system. It obviously spawned all this great co-op and everything. And I'm not insulting the system, but the base theme is okay. I find this theme way more interesting because the theme is almost like this could have been the original pandemic theme. Like it's not even really a pandemic because the barbarians are attacking Rome. When they overrun cities, the people around those cities join the barbarians and more barbarians are there. Also your character, you're not playing a doctor who's going around curing stuff. Actually by yourself, you can't even fight. So this actually leads right to another cool positive of the game is there are legions and you have to have legions in the Roman army to do the fighting for you. This game adds an element of randomness, which I kind of actually appreciate because one thing of base pandemic is 
it can be figure outable where you can say, okay, for the next four turns, let's do this. But the dice make the turns a little more fluid. You have to kind of see what you get sometimes. The dice, typically, you're going to kill at least one bad guy. There's only a one in six chance that you don't at least get one of those cubes to kill a bad guy. But there can be different things that can happen. You can kill a bad guy. You can kill a bad guy and lose one of your legions. You can kill two bad guys and lose a legion. The most common thing that happen is just simply kill a bad guy. There's also a a bird which basically activates your character's special power and also the idea of the legions is if you leave a legion in a city when a cube or a barbarian would attack that city you take the legion and the cube off again i think i love how they kind of rethought this strategy it adds a new layer to the strategy where one great thing you can do in the game you can say you know what instead of taking you can take three legions with you on your turn instead of taking three with you Instead of taking all three of those legions with you on your turn, you might leave one behind because you know there's a supply route there that's pretty at risk. And he, leaving that one legion there saves you one turn of our barbarian attacking that space and both coming off. Now for negatives, I don't have a whole lot of negatives in comparison to the old game. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of new things that were added that I like less than the old game. Some of the problems with the old game I think are still there, especially the randomness of the draw. I play this at two players in a seven card hand limit, just like the old game. If you draw three, three whites and three blacks and they both require five to get rid of that not get rid of it but you make alliances and stand barbarians it just can be kind of tough i think that problem still exists in this version and as always cooperative games can lead themselves to power gaming which is where one player is way better at the game or maybe they think they're way better at the game and they tell all the other players to do i only mention this for those of you who maybe have never played base pandemics i know there's a whole new crowd of board gamers who got into it after a base pandemic came out and maybe you haven't played the style of game but all these games make sure you're in a group where everyone can kind of be happy, people make their own decisions. You don't just tell everyone what to do because it is a game where you can say, oh, if I go to here, you should go to Rome and do this. And I on my turn can do this. So it can kind of lend itself towards that. I would say that's about, I think it may be slightly better than base pandemic because again, the dice add that little element of randomness where you can't literally sit there and count out the next four turns. I think that is a positive, but it still kind of exists. Now there is one native I have compared to base pandemic. I'm assuming they did this for balance reasons. You start the game out with five Rome cards already in the discard pile. And what I don't like is there are nine cards that are nine starting spaces on the board. Again, I assume it's for game balance, but those nine don't change. So from game to game, you're going to like have a similar starting setup. So I guess in that sense, I wonder if the game would have as much variance from play to play. I think maybe they were trying to address the issue. We probably, if you played base pandemic, you know it can happen. Is once in a while you just have a bad, um, bad shuffle of the cards where you go, oh, we drew this, there was an epidemic, we do this, put some stuff here, and oh, we just had an outbreak and there was three things by each other that happened to be all really bad. They all set each other off and, oh, I guess we ran out of the blue cube. So we're out of blue cubes, we lose the game. That can happen really quickly in base pandemic. It, I have, everyone I'm guessing has played enough has happened before you play a game and you kind of go, oh, it's been 15 minutes or 10 minutes even, two or three turns in, it's already over. Maybe they're trying to address that frustration. Um, it does just lead to a little less variability from play to play. Okay, I'm not gonna spend that long recommendation. This game is a good medium weight cooperative game. I think if you like Base Pandemic, but you were kind of like me and you're just like, eh, I've played it enough. I mean, I've played Base Pandemic enough for my life. If you're like me, you kind of see this and say, oh, cool, like this is different enough to give you new challenges. Now, if you've never played Pandemic before, or especially if you've never played a cooperative game, kind of a cooperative medium weight complexity game like this, I would highly recommend you play at least one of them. I mean, this these games kind of spawned a whole kind of, I wanna say a movement, but this whole idea of like, let's have games where characters work together to try to solve a problem. And so on your turn, you do things to solve it, end your turn, you draw stuff, and there's an automatic, automatic like, oh, bad stuff happened to me. Okay, this happened, next player goes. They try to solve some of the bad stuff, you draw something, bad stuff happens. So with that in mind, I think I would suggest getting this over base pandemic, mostly for the theme. And I'm not even kind of referring to, pandemic was obviously made before COVID-19. So some people kind of find that theme off-putting. If you do find that theme off-putting, definitely get this version. But even if it wasn't for that, even if it wasn't for the theme of a pandemic being off-putting to some people, I still think this theme is just a lot more interesting. Like I mentioned, I've never found the base pandemic theme like that cool. You're just kind of going around taking cubes off a map. It's a cool puzzle. It's just the theme isn't great. This theme is so much better. You have your warriors or your leaders or your politicians and you're in Rome 
Rome's being attacked from all sides of barbarians and you're trying to figure out how to save the city of Rome. I would go for this one over base pandemic. I think it's a better game. I think the supply routes and everything will be more interesting. If you've never tried them before, I would say jump into this one, maybe even more so than the base game. All right, so there's my thoughts on Pandemic Fall of Rome. A little shorter review than usual because I've done a whole playthrough solo mode of this game where I talk about how it works. So when that pops up there in the corner, if you click on that and have a really good time watching it, kind of see how the flow of the game actually works, it might kind of give you a better sense of how gameplay actually goes. And of course, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel. You'll see more reviews. You'll see lots of playthroughs, just some how to play videos. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, liking it really helps the channel out. See you next time.